Hey, it's Tim Ringgold, and here is another app to make your life more relaxed. Hello, and welcome to the app review of the month. This month, we're reviewing GarageBand Part 1. Why Part 1? Because this app is so robust, I can't review it in one video. I apologize to my Android users, but this is a Mac product, so it's only available on iOS if you have Mac OS, this is an app that comes free, uh, but it's recording software. It's very different on the computer than on your tablet or your phone. Today, we're just talking about what you can do on your tablet or your phone, because there's things you can do on your tablet or your phone that you can't do on your computer. Uh, it is basically an ungodly amount of virtual instruments that you can combine and create in any combination to create amazingness. <laughs> How's that for... a great description. Uh, the instruments have a beautiful layout, very intuitive, totally non-musician proof. You basically can play these instruments without having to know how. And I'll show you just how easy that is. The sound quality is amazing. And you can constantly get new sound packs, more sounds, uh, and they update their sounds. It's really high quality. You can either just jam and play with it, or you can record, save and share your music if you choose to. You've got to use it with headphones uh, because the sound quality is too good for the built-in speakers on a phone or on a uh, tablet. And here's the most amazing part. It's free. Yep, it's free. I don't understand, but uh, let me just say I'm old enough to know that the equipment that they basically converted into software, like how many tens and tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of musical equipment and studio equipment that are in, included in this app for free, it's mind boggling. So let's jump in. Here we are inside GarageBand. Welcome. When you come inside, you open up a new document or a song. This is where you end up and it's amazing. <laughs> so let me show you all the different instruments that you can play with. Okay. So there's keyboard, drums, amps to plug your guitar into, microphones to sing into, strings, bass, guitar, which can be acoustic or electric, and world instruments. Oh, and then there's virtual drummers, external uh, integration, and then endless sound libraries that you can download for free. As you can see, I've got quite a few to download. So with each of these instruments, they have this smart function. So if I click on it and I open it up, You'll see first just, well, any time now, you'll see a piano. Yay. So I can play on the piano if I want to. That's cool. Uh, but there's something much cooler. I want to tell you about it. And it's called Smart Piano. So when I go back to my instruments, see how it says Smart Piano? Check this out. In Smart Piano, I get a choose from lots of different instruments. And I could have done this in the other setting. So for example, I've got all these different types of pianos and keyboards, synthesizers that I can choose from that all have, you know, totally different sounds. But let's just stick with grand piano for now. And in grand piano, I can play chords without playing chords, just with a touch of my finger. And these dark gray buttons are the left hand, the one, five, one, or one, five octave. Pretty cool. So now I can put together chords without having to actually finger them. And I can do it on my own. But it's kind of clunky. So one of the things GarageBand will do is it'll create some riffs for me with this autoplay feature. So if you look at the wheel that's next to the photo of Grand Piano, I want to turn it on. And when I turn it on, it changes now. And I've got my left hand and my right hand or both hands. That's the three uh, different rows. So I'm going to go to autoplay four because I know it. And if I just click on C... Now it's playing me, as you can see, a rhythm track. And I'm just controlling where I go.
pretty cool, right? So it organizes all of the chords within the key so that they all work well together. I don't need to know which ones need to be major, minor, diminished, or flat because when I set the key signature, I can choose. And then I can also say, no, I don't want to follow that. And I can use whatever, uh, whatever I want. So lots of different choices in there. I can also change the tempo. If I want the tempo to be faster or slower, I can tap it or just manually set it. So pretty cool. A lot of different options within any of these smart features. Uh, but I want to show you a couple of other things. So here we have, uh, let's go to the drummer because he's amazing or they are amazing. There's a bunch of them. So this drummer feature is something like unlike I've ever seen. When I click on this, it's going to load a virtual drummer. In this case, it's Kyle. Kyle plays, uh, you know, a drum set and I can add percussion if I want just by deciding what kind of percussion I want. And then I can decide what level I want it to play. I can change the hi-hats. I can change the kick and snare. I can have it be loud. I can have it be soft, simple, or complex. I can add, take out the fills so it's really steady, or I could add lots of fills so it's really organic and you can't tell. And it's going to magically somehow uh, just all do this instantly up above when I just click play. So check it out. So now we're under complex. So I'm going to make it simple. And it usually takes it like four beats to kind of recycle and uh, update what I've asked it to do. There you go, right? Well, that sounds pretty mechanical. Let's add some fills. Make it a little more complex. I really don't like that hi-hat. Oh, and we're listening to the metronome. Let's turn off that metronome. There we go. Uh, let's try a different beat. Um, let's try mixtape, see what that does. Might take a second for it to Cool. All right, Kyle, not bad. Maybe I want a different drummer. Maybe I want, wow, so many to choose from. I don't even know who to pick. How about Darcy? What you got, Darcy? Oh, I like your style, Darcy. Pretty cool. Now remember I said I could change the tempo, right? crazy, right? The amount of customization. <coughs> Excuse me. So I wanted to show you this because you can have a drummer now behind your tracks and not a drum machine. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Last but not least, the thing I'm going to show you before I go today is because you can do that smart feature on all these different instruments is if you want to plug in a guitar to here, you have at your disposal a lot of the world's famous uh, guitar amps. And of course, GarageBand was very smart. If you're a guitarist, you recognize these brands, but of course they couldn't put the brand name on it. So they just built the amp head to look exactly like the Mesa Boogie right there. It's a dual rectifier head or a Marshall or a Vox, right? So pretty stealthy, uh, gotta be, gotta say, um, all the way through. And uh, yeah, then if you want, Look at all the different options just for clean, crunchy, distorted, processed, all kinds of options for guitar. Bass, same way. It's going to load all the famous bass amps out there that uh, bassists will recognize. And you can go ahead and, of course, as a bassist, you can pick which uh, presets you want to use. Uh, let's say you'd prefer to use pedals because you're one of those hipsters that likes those pedals. Sure. Cool. Daddy-o.
let's try, I'm a fan. I'm going to try something different. I want, oh, I got all these different ones to choose from and I can add up to four different pedals. Uh, it's jamming on me. Well, I can add up to four different pedals and, uh, control them, turn them on, turn them off. Pretty impressive. So, uh, I think that's going to be it for today because, well, there's just so much more to show you. Um, and I just don't, uh, I don't think we have the time. All right. So there you go. Lead vocals. Um, look at all the different things you can do with, uh, vocals. You can do acoustic guitar. You can do keyboards already. You can do drums as if you're in the room. There are producer effects in here. And then for fun, there is all of these guys. So with that, I'll show you what the fun setting looks like. And then your kid can have just as much fun on this device as anything else. And yes, you will sound like a robot, a shark, an alien, a squirrel. Uh, yeah, or a me megaphone, any of these. So hope that was fun. Next month, what we'll do is we'll do a round two. And that one will be more about how to actually record with it as opposed to just play it. Um, but any of these, you can just plug in your headphones or Bluetooth, whatever, listen, play along, jam along. Great for inspiring you to jam with, with another instrument. Great to just make music on in your headphones by yourself, whether you're hanging out at home or you're on an airplane or anywhere else. Tons and tons and tons of options there. Um, and people use these as professional grade. I have recorded bumpers for podcasts that I recorded straight out of GarageBand. There are bands that you know, like Fall Out Boy and Rihanna and Usher uh, and Radiohead and Nine Inch Nails who have all released material that they recorded in GarageBand. So this is some legit software and the fact that it's free is amazing. Okay, see you next week. Wait, just kidding. See you next month. Hey, thanks for checking out the review. Make sure to like and subscribe below and uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you've tried this app before. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? And then also let me know if there are any apps that you've used to either make music uh, and or relax to music that you'd like reviewed uh, or just to share with the community. All right. All right. We'll see you next time.